morning YouTube people. It is Sunday morning and I gotta go to work. Today I'm gonna be working on this 61 Olds, the uh, one I did the little buff job on the paint. I need to get the carpet out, replaced, do the package tray, dash pad, and uh, just generally uh, clean it back up. So, but to do that, I have to test drive a couple cars. I've got this 70 estate wagon behind me that I did a little bit of car work on. And then also inside the shop, I have a 51 Chevy, little two door vehicle that I need to get test drove. So hopefully, Test drive should be good, and we can get the 61 olds in here to get the carpet done. Let's get this stuff done. Cold start. video a few days ago about swapping a carburetor fuel filter and uh, this is the car that I did it on um, it was experiencing symptoms of fuel starvation fuel starvation at wide open throttle so the first thing I checked was the filter that was clean as a whistle so I pulled the carburetor apart and found um, that the needle was missing the hanger that attaches it to the float so my educated guess would be that the uh, needle was just kind of hanging around down there at the seat and not allowing a bunch of fuel to come in when it needed it most so hopefully I'm gonna get this thing warmed up a little bit and beat on it a little bit and see if I can see if I've fixed the problem running this car easy right now. I don't want to beat on it until it's nicely warmed up. So I'm gonna give it probably you know 10 minutes of putzing around and and then I'll open it up. Feels pretty good once it's a uh, wide open throttle. Of course I forgot to take video because I was too excited to hit the gas pedal. <clears throat> Next 51 Chevy Deluxe. There's a couple of one car I gotta keep out of the background here. Push start. Oh yeah. Let this thing warm up a little bit and we'll take her out on the town and make sure she runs okay. Here we go. Goal with this car is just to make sure it is in decent running condition. So let's give her a shot. Car feels pretty good. Just uh, manual steering, manual brakes, uh, power glide transmission, nothing, nothing crazy. So it seems to like 50 miles an hour. Um, the speedometer is kind of choppy, but you almost expect stuff like that. You know, but people are going to tell you you can lube the speedometer cable and stuff like that, but I don't think I've ever been able to f actually fix a speedometer cable by lubing it. Um, so, you either live with it or replace it. You may be able to prolong it by moving it a little bit. But um, the goal with this car, like I said, is just to make a decent driver with it. Um, a little bit of background on the, on the story is this is a longtime family car. Uh, the owner's husband passed away in January of cancer and. Sorry, got to turn around in the cul de sac. <clears throat> One handed. Um, so she is the primary caretaker of the car now and uh, just wants to be able to get in the car and drive it. So that's what we're going to try and make sure that she has. So, so far so good. Okay, back to business. I'm going to get this thing in the shop. It's been a few weeks since I've started this thing. Let's see if it's still... Runs, set the choke. Come on now. And a bond 
fire last night. Start. Damn it. material for it. It looks like it matches. So he said he found it at uh, Joanne Fabrics, I think. So that's good. Let's get it in the garage. Okay, disconnected the negative side of the battery so I could leave the doors open without killing it. Let's get this thing clean out. I got to get the front and back seat out and uh, any other random things. I actually bought um, stock style rear view mirrors for it, but the problem is these goofy things that are on here now mount in a different spot. These mount on, on there and they won't cover the holes. So now I've spent $180 on things I can't use. So I'm gonna figure out what to do with those. All right. Oh yeah, yeah, wheel covers for it. As opposed to the stock style uh, poverty caps and trim rings, this is a full deluxe wheel cover. And I took them apart and cleaned them and painted this ring white to match the roof of the car. And it really sets the car off compared to what it was before. So anyway, back on track. Back seat bottom was just sitting in there. I don't think they had, uh, you know, they've got these latches down here, then they totally covered it up, so they just set the seat in there. But I'm surprised at how nice the underside of the seat is, because uh, normally you see these cars and they're all ratted out with mouse nests and the burlap's all gone, and this uh, material is, is either on the floor or it's been vacuumed up. So that's good. We'll see what the back seat's back looks like. I'm very impressed. The metal's not even rusty on this thing. It's almost unheard of. I, these things are always just covered in rust. It was a little bit of surface rust, but not too bad at all. Cool. What's the back look like? It's in good shape there. I don't know what the hell that is. But I do need to get this off so I can do something to it. I don't know really what yet, but we're going to wing it. These speakers are just in here with self-tapping Phillips screws. I'll take these out and hopefully it didn't really imprint this vinyl too much because I really, I don't, I'm going to just delete these speakers and I'm going to delete the uh, front speakers that are in the two panels. Oh, shorty screwdriver. This car had uh, tint all the way around as you uh, may remember from the last video I did on this car and these the front and back windows were just absolutely atrocious to get off. They were that purple parts store tint that you can buy in a roll. And uh, I just basically chipped it off. It took me a couple hours on this back window. Some of it came off okay, but I mean, it was like just a nightmare. Come on now. These look like nice speakers. I 
I think they're just going to a uh, like an in auxiliary input up front. Uh -huh. Yeah. MB Court. Interesting little push button quick disconnects. Yeah. Yeah. Those are trash. Speakers are out, so all four of these sill plates have to come out as well. And I, you know, I think I mentioned before, it still has some of that original carpet under here, but I don't think that there's enough of it to preserve. Yeah, there's... Yeah, they cut it off about halfway through the footwell. That really sucks. It's just that nice salt and pepper, not salt and pepper, just peppered uh, uh, maroon carpet. But hopefully the stuff that I have that's new looks close enough. Um, I'm just going to replace it all, but I just like to keep it as, as original as possible. Okay, I was recording the removal of this, I thought, but I didn't. So, um, I think this has been painted black because it looks like it's got maroon where the vinyl was covering it up and maybe just a little bit on the slight edges here. There's no indication of what color it was on bottom. But what I'm gonna do is, uh, since this, this kind of came apart here, I'm just gonna make a template or not make a template, use this as a template on some eighth inch hardboard, cut it out, paint it uh, the, as close as I can get maroon to this and uh, kind of wedge it back in here. On the other side of this vinyl here, you can see some remnants of the old stuff. So yeah, I guess I gotta go to the hardware store. Anyway, moving on from that, I, as far away from the 57 as I could get because I know we're gonna have to pull the front seat out from this side because the uh, steering wheel usually gets in the way with these big non-foldable bench seats so yeah good times and I'm a one-man show today I may try to get my wife down here to help me out but um, you can kind of see some staining through here I have an upholstery cleaning machine on the way We'll see how that works out. Arwick Carpet Mills, 1961 Olds, part number, style, tuxedo maroon. See if I can get this seat out by myself. Reinforcement time. Okay, got the carpet out. Everything looks pretty good. I mean, nice and solid in through here. I'm not going to rip up this stuff because it's really, yeah, maybe I'll pull it up. This stuff's not really in good, very good shape, but I did find the old proverbial floor repair. That's as bad as it gets on this floor. The passenger side is crusty, but it's solid. I'm just gonna do a total vacuum in here. So yeah, not too bad. This uh, aftermarket AC is gonna be kind of an issue trying to get that carpet back under there because it's right up against the floor. Uh, the uh, gas pedal came out with any pro with no problems. Uh, those, those gas pedals are held on with balls. So I can find this thing here. And it's uh, it's in good shape. It's not torn up or ripped. It's got a small crack, but it should go back on pretty easy with a little bit of grease. So get this thing vacuumed up and see what we really got. Well, better than nothing. 
That's the worst part of the floor. It's really the only bad spot. That's really This is really not even pitted much. It's just surface rusty. Everything else is super solid. Nice and happy about that. I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna leave the wiring for all the speakers intact in case someone wants to come in and redo it. So I don't have to rip up carpets or anything again. So I'm gonna drop this carpet in here and see what it looks like. I bought preformed carpet from somewhere on eBay. It's it's auto custom carpets is what everybody sells, and it is uh, it fits pretty well. It's actually better than what normally I see. Uh, the part of the trick is to get this stuff out and let it kind of relax, uh, you know, open it up and let it sit on the on the roof or something like that of the car, and just kind of open up a little bit. So um, one thing we do want to be careful about back here is I don't want to cut it too short because the carpet reveals somewhere around here uh, because the back seat, you know, we probably want to cut it down somewhere around here and make sure we're out far enough when we do cut it. But before, before I cut it, I want to start making holes for seat belts and get those in so it locks this stuff down. I'm not really a big fan of gluing this stuff down unless I have to, so we're just going to let it fly. And... Uh, yeah. Okay, I've got four holes for seat belts that I want to burn in here. So instead of trying to cut the carpet with a utility knife or something and getting it all stringy, uh, I like to take a, a big, I don't know, pokey guy, heat the hell out of it and burn it in so that it doesn't cause any uh, fraying or anything like that. But your trick is to find the hole I need to do these uh, seat belts, and I've got two holes for the back uh, of the front seat on each side that I need to do. Okay, so coming from under, we know where we are now, so I can basically just chase that when I heat it up. Shouldn't, shouldn't hold that with my bare hands. There we go. Don't be afraid to get this really hot. Not gonna hurt anything getting it really super hot. literally just melts right through there this hole is going to be about a half inch and you may want to ream it out a little bit like this it smells really good too these are uh, these are pretty big bolts so I want the hole to be as big as possible it's kind of the same situation with these smaller bolts too just so you have a little bit of breathing room but this just kind of allows you to Get it back in there with ease. Now, let's see which one is which. This is the buckle portion, so it's going to be on the outside. Not exactly the cleanest thing in the world. I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go up to the other garage and just try to clean that up with a wire wheel a little bit and maybe just dust a little bit of clear on it just to make it pretty. So I'm going to do that with all these front belts. These uh, seat belts were way more disgusting than I originally anticipated. So what I ended up having to do was uh, I lightly blasted the ends of these things. And then I brought them down to the slop sink and soaked them in simple green, scrubbed the hell out of them and uh, let them dry a little bit. So, um, and then also I didn't want to put crappy 
looking fasteners in. So I just brought the bolts up and cleaned them on a wire wheel, then did a quick polish on them just to make them look decent. grips. Pretty simple. I'm just going to move on to the other three and take care of them and uh, see you on the other side. Okay, I've got the belt holes done. Um, one note I want on these center belts, I have to feed this section through the front seat before I can uh, tighten these down. So they're just in there right now to hold the carpet in place. And uh, I'll take them back out and then feed them to the front seat. I've got to uh, probably need to just those are the two front holes. There's two more holes right here. I'm going to go ahead and just burn those out. Then I'll do the same thing on the other side. And uh, I th think I will go ahead and do the front as well. I'm trying to figure out if I want to do the package tray. I should have done that first because I'll be sitting all over this thing. But, uh, you know, I like to do things backwards. I guess I have a hard time not going into details like this, but I went ahead and polished all these as well. Okay, I've laid the front in and I'm starting to trim it out. I've got the that guy in there um, and I'm looking for the, the balls for the gas pedal. And of course, yeah, I had to clean the gas pedal up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the balls exposed and use a heat gun to heat up these three uh, spots and get that thing snapped back in. And then get this thing installed. I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, burn through my holes here and then I'll work on the other side. Oh, and my wife is cleaning the seats as we speak. I just finished up cutting the uh, package tray out of this hardboard material. It's just an eighth inch thick stuff. It's about as good as it gets uh, besides buying new uh, door card type material. Uh, and so here it is here. It's got a fresh just kind of a dust coat of black on it right now. I may put one more coat on just to even it out. Um, and it should be like a flat black, but it's still wet. So anyway, it looks like, kind of like poo, but I've got these kick panel um, pieces here that the previous owner had used this black Lowe's carpet crap to cover up the original cardboard panels and uh, so I'm just gonna kind of wing it and let these things dry there's uh, actually a, the right color for those things I'm gonna try to do the same thing with this go ahead and just do like a dust coat of kind of a maroon color on there and it should be pretty close to the kind of reddish brown purple color -y that we want so yep oh and this is all the old crap that came out of the bottom of the car Okay, carpet is finished and the front seat is in. Uh, the fabric is still wet from being shampooed. But we're in pretty good shape. I still gotta get the kick panels in there drying. Everything else is ready to roll. Package tray is right over here. It actually, it looks a little mottled because it's still drying, but look at the texture that came out of that paint can so weird i did that black base on it and then i just kind of misted i did two coats of mist on this and it turned out really interesting so i think it's going to work out really well for this car it's probably not stock appearing but it's gonna it's gonna look back good back there in that big void so all right tomorrow back at it and you're gonna get the back seats uh, back seat top and bottom in and then the package tray as well what else is left on this list? Oh, 
Dash pad, yeah. Tune up, kick panels. Got it. So, back at it tomorrow. Thanks everyone for watching. This was kind of a, uh, a fun car for me to resurrect. It wasn't really much of a resurrection, but it was more of a clean up and, and just kind of get it back to a good driver status. So hopefully you enjoyed the video and uh, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Tell all your friends and family, neighbors, etc. I'll see you next time.